In this lesson, you will learn how to solve linear equations with decimals. I'll show you two methods, and we'll figure out which one works best in different situations. The first method is straightforward. Just solve it like a regular equation with whole numbers. But you need to be a little careful with your decimal math. Here, 2.7 is being added to x. So to get x by itself, we subtract 2.7 from both sides. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you must also do to the other to keep the equation balanced. Now on the left, 2.7 minus 2.7 is 0. They cancel out, leaving just x. On the right, 3.9 minus 2.7 is 1.2. So the solution is x equals 1.2. This method is super quick if the decimal math is easy, like in this example, or if you can use a calculator. But if you're working by hand and the decimal math gets tricky, it can slow you down and lead to mistakes. That's when the second method really shine. With this method, instead of solving directly, we clear the decimals first. We do that by multiplying every term in the equation by 10 or 100 or 1000, depending on how many digits are after the decimal point. Let's see it in action with the same equation. First, check how many digits are after the decimal point in each number. Here, both 2.7 and 3.9 have just one digit after the decimal point. That means we multiply every term in the equation by 10, which moves the decimal point one place to the right and removes it. Remember, even though our goal is to eliminate the decimals, we still need to multiply every term, including the variable, to keep the equation balanced. So don't forget, everything gets multiplied. 10 times x is 10x. 10 times 2.7 is 27. 10 times 3.9 is 39. Now there are no decimals. From here we just solve it like a regular two-step equation. First, isolate the variable term by subtracting 27 from both sides. On the left, the 27s cancel, leaving 10x. On the right, we get 12. Next, isolate x by dividing both sides by 10. The 10s cancel, leaving x. Dividing by 10 just moves the decimal point one place to the left. This method takes a few more steps, but it makes the math easier. You'll love it when we get to complicated equations later. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'm happy to help. All right, let's move on to our second example. Let's solve it with method 1 first, then try method 2. Here, 1.4 is being subtracted from x. So to get x by itself, we add 1.4 to both sides. On the left, these cancel out, leaving just x. What is negative 5.2 plus 1.4? Not the easiest mental math, right? But with a calculator, it is quick. You get negative 3.8. Now let's try method 2, where we clear the decimals first. We'll begin by checking how many digits are after the decimal point in each number. Here, both have one digit, right? So we multiply everything by 10. That moves the decimal point one place to the right. From here, just solve it like any two-step equation. First add 14 to both sides to isolate the variable term. On the left, these cancel out, leaving 10x. What is negative 52 plus 14? That is easier to work out, right? It is negative 38. Now divide both sides by 10 to get x by itself. That gives us x equals negative 3.8, right? Which method felt easier to you? Let me know in the comments. And by the way, if you need a refresher on solving one-step, two-step, or multi-step equations, including ones with like terms, variable on both sides, or parentheses, check the links in the description or the first comment. Awesome, let's keep going. Pause the video and try this one with both methods. All right, let's start by solving it the direct way. X is being multiplied by 0 0.24. So to get X by itself, we divide both sides by 0 0.24. On the left, these cancel out, leaving x. What is 4.8 divided by 0 0.24? Can you figure it out? Dividing decimals can feel tricky, but if you want to see why the second method helps, try doing this division by hand. For now, I'll just use a calculator, and we get 20. Now let's solve it by clearing the decimals first to make things easier. In 0 0.24, there are two digits. In 4.8, there's one digit. So to clear both decimals, we multiply both terms by 100, because multiplying by 100 moves the decimal point two places to the right. 
100 times 0.24x is 24x. 100 times 4.8 is 480, right? Now to isolate x, divide both sides by 24. The 24s cancel out, leaving just x. What is 480 divided by 24? Much easier than dividing 4.8 by 0.24 in your head, right? You can think of it like this. 480 is 48 times 10. And 48 divided by 24 is 2. Times 10 gives us 20. Great. Let's keep going. Here, x is being divided by 0 0.2. So to get x by itself, we multiply both sides by 0 0.2. On the left, these cancel out, leaving x. What is negative 1.6 times 0 0.2? That gives us negative 0 0.32. Now let's see if clearing the decimals first makes things easier. In both 0 0.2 and 1.6, there is one digit after the decimal point, right? But be careful, you cannot just multiply each decimal by 10. That would make the equation unbalanced. It breaks the rule. Instead, we multiply both sides by 10 over 10, which is just 1. This keeps the equation balanced while eliminating the decimals. This gives us 10x over 2 equals negative 16 over 10, right? Now to isolate x, multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 10 over 2. On the left, the fractions cancel out, leaving x by itself. On the right, we get negative 32 over 100. And dividing by 100 just moves the decimal point two places to the left. Great. Here's the big takeaway. For the types of equations we've solved so far, solving them directly is usually quicker, if you're comfortable with decimal math, or if you're allowed to use a calculator. But if decimal math feels tricky, or you can't use a calculator, clear the decimals first. It might take a few extra steps, but it's often easier and helps you avoid mistakes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. The next set of examples will be a bit more complex, so we'll solve them by clearing the decimals first. First, check how many digits are after the decimal point in each number. In 0 0.04 there are two digits. In 1.7 and 0 0.1 there's one digit. So, to get rid of all the decimals, multiply every term by 100 that moves the decimal point two places to the right. So 100 times 0.04x is 4x. 100 times 1.7 is 170, right? And 100 times 0.1 is 10. Now there are no decimals. Just solve it like a regular two-step equation. First, isolate the variable term by adding 170 to both sides. These cancel out, leaving 4x. On the right, we get 180. Now divide both sides by 4. That gives us x equals 45. Nice and simple, right? Try the next one. It's similar, but this time with a negative decimal coefficient. Just follow the same steps. And if this video has been helpful so far, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Both 6.5 and negative 0.5 have one digit after the decimal point, right? So to clear the decimals, multiply every term by 10. That moves the decimal point one place to the right. Next, subtract 20 from both sides to isolate the variable term. On the right, the 20s cancel out, leaving negative 5x. On the left, we get 45. Now get x by itself by dividing both sides by negative 5. On the right, the negative 5s cancel, leaving x. On the left, we get negative 9. Easy, right? So far, all our equations have had the variable on just one side. But in the next example, we'll solve an equation with variables on both sides. As always, our first step is to check how many digits are after the decimal points. In 0 0.7, there is one digit. In 1.08, 0 0.45, and 1.92, there are two digits. So to get rid of all the decimals, we multiply every term by 100. That moves the decimal point two places to the right. Now solve it just like a regular multi-step equation. Since we have variables on both sides, we need to first collect them on one side of the equation. Let's collect them on the left by subtracting 45x from both sides. On the left, 70x minus 45x gives us 25x. 
bring down the minus 108 and the equal sign. On the right, these cancel out, leaving 192. Next, isolate the variable term by adding 108 to both sides. The 100s and 8s cancel out, leaving 25x. On the right, 192 plus 108 equals 300. Finally, divide both sides by 25 to isolate x. The 25s cancel out, leaving x by itself. And 300 divided by 25 is 12, right? So the solution is x equals 12. Our final example includes parentheses, but don't worry, we'll follow the same steps as before. In 0 0.05 and 0 0.25 there are two digits. In 3.7 there is only one digit. So to clear all the decimals, multiply every term by 100, which moves the decimal point two places to the right. So on the left, 100 times 0.05x gives us 5x, and 100 times 0.25 gives us 25. On the right, 100 times 3.7 is 370. No more decimals. Awesome. Since we have parentheses, first, we need to get rid of them using the distributive property. So we distribute the 25 to both x and 4. That gives us 25x plus 100, right? Notice we have like terms on the left side. So the next step is to combine them. 5x plus 25x gives us 30x, right? Now isolate the variable term by subtracting 100 from both sides. These cancel out, leaving 30x. On the right, we get 270. Finally, divide both sides by 30 to isolate x. That gives us x equals 9, right? Nice! If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And to learn how to classify linear equations as a conditional, a contradiction, or an identity, just click the video on the screen.